evening, Andrew. It's uh, great to see you again, Stas. Well, I think this is the third time now. Uh, this time we're on Skype before we're on Google, and uh, we started on Facebook. So, cheers. Um, the the they couldn't stop us from getting together for this well owned bed. And um, and what have you got in your glass, my friend? Uh, this is the uh, this is the Beer Co Viper XBA Fresh Work Kit. I've still got a, a wee bit in the keg, which is. Getting very it's light. It's cleared up nicely because I remember it was quite hazy in your video about um, how to um, make a fresh work kit. Yeah, it's it's a bit clear. It hasn't gone totally clear. It's still yeah. got a little bit of haze. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm enjoying a um, hoppy colch tonight from um, one of our customers um, down here in Victoria who um, home to Pro Brewers, Petros and Janos, uh, brewed a nice hoppy colch with uh, crisp Euro Pearls Vienna, uh, Kiwi Mochweka and the new Lalaman Colm yeast because um, it's been Ooh. we've finally got some good weather down here so it's good cold drinking weather oh nice yes. yeah uh, it's been 41 degrees here today far out yeah okay and I hope you're safe up there you haven't been um, um, hit by these bushfires have you uh, not not directly from the flames but it's we've had orange sky for a better part of two weeks I reckon oh and dear yeah, lots not of smoke good. around so yeah it's Pretty scary stuff. Isn't it? We had uh, one hot day yesterday, I think it was 37, and everyone in Melbourne started sort of heading for the beaches and we're back to the low 20s. So we seem to have been um, spared uh, touch wood from the, the worst of um, what New South Wales and Queensland is um, suffering. And um, the fortunate thing too is that uh, Victoria's had a lot of rain, which is good news for the malt harvest. Yeah. <laughs> now I think uh, thank you for organising the um, uh, this catch up. We were going to talk about a year in review, weren't we? Um, yeah. I know you've done a great job this year, Andrew, um, keeping our customers informed and teaching them everything from how to make malt teas to uh, evaluating base malts, making starters, water chemistry. The list goes on and on. Um, we've had a lot of positive responses, so maybe. Today is one of those rare chances you and I get to catch up for a beer and a chat about, um, you know, what's happening in the world of brewing. Mm, that's it. So um, I think I had here what's new in malt. Um, what are you seeing in terms of trends in, in malt? Uh, it's kind of really from all the, I'm, the home brew store that I work in up in Newcastle, uh, Newcastle Brew Shop. Uh, right. Most of our stuff, it, like it's traditionally been the kit and kilo uh, uh, shop. We do a we do a lot of. Um, there's a lot of the. It's kind of two clientele on the beer side. There's there were people that have been brewing since the 80s, early 90s, and they've been doing it their way, and that's what works for them. They're still using pink stain. Nothing wrong with pink stain. I just don't like chlorine in the beer. And anyway, that's another story. But. So, but then there's the other people coming in, they're starting to sort of get a little bit more interested about, you know, the different types of base malt. They just, they don't, don't just want pale malt. They want, they start, you know, dealing with a lot of, um, you know, exploring lots of different malts, I guess, and um, thinking about which hops, no, oh, sorry, which hops, which malt best support different styles. The any IPA is a big one. Um, and yeah. sort of getting into like, Sort of a, the deep dive, and we, we talked a little about a little bit about the the make it community, like the do it yourself yes. and yep. exploring different options. Uh, so yep. there's a bit of that coming through. Unfortunately, we, we don't have a warehouse be like too big to stock or as many malts as we would like. Yes. But hopefully yep. that's uh, something that's that's coming soon. But yeah, well, that's interesting. I heard you mention there the New England IPA or the haze craze. It certainly seems to have trucked on doesn't it um and that's the same down here in, in melbourne and we're seeing with our customers as well now it's hazy pails um and oats seems to feature very heavily in that um we've had a few run on our um crisp naked oat malt um also some people are using the flake torrified oats um yeah. but yeah that's interesting um what you mentioned there and, and when you mentioned the ipas too um i guess the crystal malt seem to have been um less common in the New World IPAs than they were in the past. Yeah, a lot of people are maybe going for maybe a bit of Munich or something a little yes, bit. exactly. Uh, a little less uh, sweet. Yes. Uh, they're preferring maybe maybe it's the West Coast IPA, but uh, maybe or maybe it's just a reaction against the, the traditional um, American pale. Um, yeah. I'm, I sort of 
in my own brewing, I tend to go, oh, I love the caramel in that. And then I go, no, I like, I like no caramel in it. And, yeah. You know, <laughs> and a fear of oxidation, I think I've heard from some of the professional brewers as well. So, but we've certainly seen some people lot gravitate towards things like these drier crystals like amber malt uh, from Crisp or, or Supernova from Bladfield being popular. Um, but, you know, not like when we say popular, popular from a small um, part of the market. Um, the other one I've put here when we were talking about this offline earlier, Andrew, was what's old is new again. So we're seeing a return to heritage malt. So... Crisp launched the Chevalier Heritage Ale Malt, which has been um, very successful and um, breaking news. Do, 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 do. Um, Hannah Pilsner Malt, which you've probably never heard of. I certainly haven't. Um, it's the original Moldovan Pilsner Malt from the Czech Republic in the 1850s. So they bought that back from seed. Yeah. Um, only eight metric tons for the whole world. And we've got a ton of it, um, uh, which will arrive into Melbourne next week. So We'll list that one and pop that out on the newsletter. Um, and they mentioned that for this malt harvest coming up there, harvesting uh, for 2020, um, sales will have plumage archer. So there is this gravitation from like hardcore flavour forward home brewers and craft brewers who are really um, trying to push the boundaries to to look for uh, more characterful malts, which is good, you know, like yeah. everyone at the end of the day wants a beer with more flavour, so. But I think what you were talking about, what's old is new again, that's uh, certainly in the, the home brewers that I know, um, people that were always about the IPAs and the pails and the, um, the how many hundred grams can I throw in as a dry hop, um, there's, there's a lot of them are sort of starting to explore the, the, the classic Pilsners and lagers and Kölsches and the older styles and it's a different challenge because there is so little to hide behind and it's all about having really accurate processes and you know there's not, like I said there's nothing to hide behind and if you yeah. make a mistake or if the recipe's off or if your fermentation's off you'll yeah. you'll uh, you'll definitely hear yeah. about you're ha it. hanging yourself out to dry aren't you in terms of brewing no it's interesting what you said there because that was one thing. I thought uh, as I was talking about the heritage malts with more flavour, I was also thinking, and then at the other extreme, it's almost like we've seen the market splinter in two different directions, um, particularly our commercial brewing customers gravitating towards a lot of flaked maize um, for what I guess we could only refer to as um, a cream ale, um, technically BJCP, but people are 70% uh, Pilsner malt um, and then 30% uh, crisp flake torrified maize or even rice, flake torrified rice. So we're really heading towards like, what would I say, lighter, drier um, beers like um, Mexican lagers, American light lagers or Asian um, rice lagers, I guess Asahi Super Dry would be a classic example of that. But um, I guess... It's interesting, isn't it? Because, like you were just saying there, 41 degrees in Newcastle. We had a big belter yesterday. Sometimes you want a beer that just refreshes um, yeah. and, and doesn't knock you down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I what about hops? Last hops, bit. hops, hops and more hops. What are you hearing in the land of um, Newcastle and in the Newcastle homebrew shop on hops? Oh, look, our, our big five, no surprise, uh, we go through a heap of Amarillo, Galaxy, Citra, Mosaic, and Cascade. They're the, yeah. they're the big five that we go through a lot. We've been going through a fair bit of Centennial lately. Yeah. Uh, it's, so it's kind of – it's usually English or, like, but mainly American yeah. Australian style, the big, the big fruity ones. Yeah. Is a lot of what we use. I mean, we have we've got over uh, I counted them up. What nearly fifty hops available just That's coming. Right. That's great. Yeah, That's great. For a small yeah, they shop, seem, seem to launch an, a new hop every um, every month now, don't they? I know we're up over eighty, and similar to you, Andrew. Um, Citra seems to continue to truck on. Um, the word on the street is that there still won't be enough Citra next year. Galaxy. Of course, the Australian hops just dominates. Um, and, and Mosaic nice. does feel like, intuitively to me, it feels like it's tailed back a little bit. Um, Amarillo is a good hop and, and, and continues to grow, and it's great to see people returning to classics like Centennial. A couple of the ones that have seemed to have risen their heads up this year, El Dorado, maybe off the Hayes craze, um, and Kashmir is a sleeper. I think that's a good hop, yeah. and we've seen some traction on the old um, Denali uh, or the new 
uh, now called Sultana X O six two seven seven. But yeah, yeah right. we similarly, you guys. It seems um, everyone loves the American hops. Oh, and that said too, um, I must say that um, as we head into summer, not unsurprisingly, those and you mentioned before Pilsners, those New Zealand hops are getting some real traction. Machuica. We've yeah, seen a little bit more rewaker and yeah, a lot else. of that. And also the East Kent Gold is classic. Um, oh yes, always that, sells, doesn't it? Yeah. It just tick, it doesn't doesn't get smashed, but it just ticks through nicely. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. All always like stirring and goldings. Good to know that the classics still get a run every now and again. Um, yeast, dare we ask, what's hot in yeast? Oh well, fake is. Yes. <laughs> Ferment's hot. Ferment's yeah. fast. It's perfect for Newcastle. You don't have fermentation control, you don't need it. Uh, <laughs> have you had a play around with that yourself um, at home, Andrew? I've only had a play around with one strain, which is from Garden Scorville, mm-hmm. um, sent from England, actually. Fantastic. It's a, Why not wood chip? No, it was uh, dried and in a Ziploc bag. So Brilliant. Yeah, top cropped, dried, Brilliant. and then scraped into a Ziploc bag and they last in the fridge for years. Uh, sorry, in the yep. freezer for years. And yep. it's got uh, f- fermented around 28 to 34. It's reasonably clean. It's got a little bit of that sort of uh, farmhouse funk, but okay. it's got a, a red apple ester. Yep. Uh, and if you push it, if you either under pitch it or push the temperature high, it goes real sharp lemon. Okay, uh, interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's great in a New England IPA or a hoppy pale. It's terrible in a sweet stout because okay. uh, you, you have, like, the apple ester. It's not mm. a green apple. It's a, it's a sweet but but a slight acidity uh, there. And then you, you have, like, your lactose and your, yes. and your brain just thinks, like, sour milk. Yes. <laughs> Just yeah, good call. Cool. Thin. And I, I, I did the uh, sweet stout with uh, the Giga Yeast Scotch yes. Owl. Scotch yeah. Owl 1, 044. Yeah. Was it? 044, GY 044, yep. Yeah, that, uh, so I had a couple of litres on the fake, and yep. uh, it was chocolate cheese. Wow, um, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you were talking there, I was starting to think well, it would be interesting that Kvake for an apple cider. Um, yeah, yeah the we the use it all the time in that. So fantastic. Um, yeah, look, we've we've only just managed to get some Kavak in the first couple of batches. Just flew out the door as fast as they came in. Um, I think the Hornadale strain and the Kavak number one GYO. Oh, sorry, GY one three four and one three five. But the other one that we've heard some interesting um, feedback from. We've just sent some out to a craft whiskey maker um, because the whiskey makers. Um, are really interested in carrying esters through the still, um, and esters do seem to translate through. So, so there's some interest in in in, um, in experimentation and craft whiskey with new yeast as well, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, similar to you, Stas, Kavak has been um, on the wish list, everyone's wish list all year. Um, we have seen, but again, it's like talking about off a smaller and lower base. Some return to style, some um, German lager yeast is selling well, and the other one that's um, doing okay, um, which is really good to see, is um, GY028 Belgian Wit. Um, so yeah. some people are out there making a nice um, Belgian Wit beer, which is, you know, a, an absolute classic style. Um, yeah. um, underrated, we don't see enough of it in this country. Um, adjuncts. <laughs> what, what is everyone throwing into their beer other than um, moles, well, hops, and yeast? We got well. We talked about the um, the maize and the, the rice before, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously with the New England IPAs, you've got your milkshake IPAs, That's it, like those, yeah, and and malted extra to a certain extent as yes. well. I'm, I'm I'm guessing, uh, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, that's uh, there was a little bit of experimentation with some uh, some other non things like spices and yes uh, and other things, but that's yeah, I, I'd say lactose and maltodextrin with the haze craze and everyone yeah, yeah. Uh, you know I think all that, that, that that's interesting. That's similar. We've we've seen a little a few people taking to vanilla. You know this whole yeah. breakfast beer trend and the pastry beer trend. The um, I'm not sure about the milkshake. Um, IPA um, craze whether that will roll on. Um, when I ask brewers why they're doing it, they tell me it's to do with mouthfeel, and I sort of feel like we could be getting that mouthfeel with 
other unmalted cereals like we talked about before, oats or um, or rye, uh, rolled rye, um, um, or uh, flaked barley. I think is brilliant in a porter. Um, I do worry about uh, from a. I guess from an allergen perspective, um, given that 15% of the population are lactose intolerant, but I do rate it in a milk stout. Um, oh, yeah. At the end I, of the day, it doesn't, doesn't really matter what we think, it's what, what drinkers and, and brewers is, want. I, d I did a version of a, um, a mango lassi IPA, which had half a kilo of lactose and half a kilo of maltodextrin, and the mouthfeel was amazing. It was like, like freshly squeezed pulp fruit juice. Um, and I tried to sub it, sub the maltodextrin with Gladfield uh, dextrin malt. Mm -hmm. um, Gladiator. Gladiator, that's the one. Yep. Uh, yep. Spoke to Gabby and she was helpful. She told me what I should, how much I should use, and yeah. and everything. And um, yeah, it didn't have the same. Like it wasn't. Yeah, the, the mouthfeel didn't compare. Like it was. Quite, uh, yeah, it was. It was okay, but I far preferred the. The like in your face, thick mouthfeel. But again, it made yeah. it be more drinkable, not having that intense mouthfeel. Okay. Yeah. But that that mouthfeel is what made everyone who drank it go, "Oh my God, what is this?" Oh, right. And and when you said about the the which which beer was the one that gave the most mouthfeel? Was that the one with the um, lactose and malt maltodextrin? Maltodextrin, yeah. Yeah, that gave a far more enhanced mouth. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, this year at BrewCon, I couldn't help myself but ask every um, craft brewer why, what they thought was driving the haze craze, and, and a large percentage of them said sweetness. They felt that, um, which is an interesting concept because if you think about those early West Coast IPAs, they were incredibly dank and bitter, um, and, and I've tasted a lot of US brewers IPAs and a lot of Australian ones, and I tend to feel like the US guys have a far, far more rounded mouthfeel to their um, IPAs and double IPAs, and you know some of the brewers out of California like Drakes and that putting in those again um, underpinning all those hops with some unmalted cereals. Um, whereas I think here in Australia, because we tend to like like a dry light um, coloured beer, um, a lot of our IPAs were. Possible, I wouldn't say unbalanced, but they were just intensely bitter. Um, and 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 um, young drinkers do have sweeter palates, so um, maybe it's maybe Australians don't love hops as much as we think they do. Maybe they love hop aromas and hop oils, but um, I think that's the other one. I think you they people really love that double IPA aroma, and they love that yeah. cool fruit hop intensity. But yeah. but some people thought that the bitterness was maybe too too harsh, and they started brewing the same, try to get the same aroma and flavour, but without the bitterness. Yeah. And lactose and maltodextrin, they certainly do allow you to get away with more bitterness. Yes. And counteract it with the with the sweetness. Yeah, so, sweetness and the balance. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have to remind ourselves, don't we? What's the best-selling beer in Australia right now is Great Northern Super Dry, and I think I had a look at it on the website. It's 11 B IBUs. <laughs> when you're talking double IPAs, yeah, it's at 70 or 80. It's you know, eight times more bitter than uh, Great Northern Super Dry. Um, that's interesting. Um, brewing aids, have you seen any use of brewing aids? And are you reading or hearing more about people using <laughs> brewing aids for different purposes? Um, the big one is the, the dry enzyme that we, the, well, the we yep. sell. Uh, the, I'm, me personally, I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the brewed IPA style. That's just not my bag. Um, yeah. But you know, a lot of the guys do it for the like to mimic the Han Super Dry, and uh, a few yeah. of them were doing like the low carb option. And I think that's a fairly silly argument. I mean, yes, you, you'll take the sugars out, but you put it into alcohol, and alcohol's also got carbs, whether it's slightly Great. calories. Yeah. You're serious yep. about no watching your calories just just don't drink this every day yeah. or, or just just moderate your drinking i think that's the thing isn't it as um a lot we might have spoken about another time we caught up um it might be the the, the kebabs or the or the fact that you you, you you got home and had a couple of beers off the keg yep. instead of going for the run that you promised you would do or the workout um that that puts the kilos on but yeah i, I had exactly the same thing Andrew, I oh, had um, enzymes, no longer a dirty word, um, for example, yeah. brewed IPA, um, which surprised me. I actually thought that style might get more traction 
than it has. And I've often thought, um, oh, maybe it's the old um, school marketer in me, but I've kind of feel like craft brewers have missed the boat here a bit. I would love to have seen brewed IPAs in a in a green sparkling champagne bottle. Yeah. Uh, but like a Belgian sparkling beer um, and and served uh, classily during, you know, spring racing carnival or something like that and, and really taken it to wine to say, you know, beer can be um, as effervescent and dry and sparkling because some of those New World hops I think of, um, like we were talking about New Zealand hops before, but some of these modern German ones too, like Hallertau Blanc, um, throwing those Pinot Gris characters or Mandarina Bavaria with the orange peel. Um, I think, you know, we do suffer a little bit from everything goes out in a can and looks the same as every other, <laughs> yeah. other beer. I wonder um, I wonder what the, st- what the impact of the style would be if they, because I, I know people think brewed IPA is like champagne, but yeah. champagne doesn't have a lot of bitterness, but it gets... It gets its balance of the sweetness through pH, yeah. And so I, I, that's my main concern personally. Why I don't like them is I find them too bitter with not much to balance the dryness. Uh-huh. So um, maybe it's just the the the, ver- the the examples that I've had, but that that's uh-huh. just my good. Personal that's a good point. I'm just um, spitballing here. Maybe yeah, yeah, should, oh, yeah. should be a should it be a bread of tenamices? <laughs> Or a sour uh, brewed IPA, um, yeah, if maybe. possible. Um, like you said, bring the pH down, but um, well, just uh, you, use something other than IBU to balance the the sweetness. Yes. that that would be what, what I yeah. would yeah. try to do. Um, yeah. cool. and, anyway, yeah. that's we're we're kind of off topic. Yeah, um, off topic again, as as per usual. That it was probably me dragging away. Um, equipment. Um, what's everyone talking about on the interwebs and what's everyone hounding for at the moment? Um, well, if you're going to go uh, all grain, which a few people want to do, I think it could be the whole get into doing everything from scratch. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are hesitant to do it because, you know, all this time and equipment. Uh, Grandfather is, um, you know, still really popular. It's sort of like yeah. some middle middle tier option at the moment with your Brazilers and your um, Gutens down in the the value option we'll say Grandfather and then the Braumeister and Brutals and are missing anything else in the single vessel yeah Yeah. Um, so that that would be big equipment Uh, I know we talked earlier about um, the tilt Yes. Um, I see lots of people online, you know, posting their tilt fermentations, and I've been using yeah. it. Um, it's, it's been really good. It's been uh, the beer geeks' tool of um, choice, hasn't it? Like, um, you can totally geek out on fermentation with the tilt. Yeah. Um, and what about in fermentation? Um, obviously, people are getting a little bit cluey in terms of seeing a lot of people buy a temperature control and get a second hand fridge from. Um, yeah from uh, Facebook, uh, yeah. which we, we try and promote uh, a lot in the store. Again, you've got your old schools, like, oh, I just stick it in the laundry and let it go, and in five yeah. days I do yeah. this and rack it. And I said, well, what was the gravity? And like, oh, I don't know, I don't check. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so temperature control with um, linking in with the tilt. Yeah. Um, and single vessel yeah. uh, grain, uh, people get, getting into the um, uni tanks. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. um, with, and are they going plastic or stainless? Um, I think there's, again, it's like the, t- the two tiers. If, if you're really interested in the no oxygen ferment under pressure, you know, the Fermentosaurus or the Firmzilla, yeah. uh, Whatever camp you go on, uh, they're the two definitely the value options. So I'm just seeing yep. keg brought out a uh, what is it, the plastic keg? Is it? Okay. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, the Kegasaurus, is it? Or the was that Keg King or Keg Land? Or it was Keg King. Uh, it was, yep. uh, yeah, it's like a 20 litre plastic keg. So oh, it was okay. kind of nose, but I think it was like yeah, 50 cool. bucks or something. Okay, uh, gee, that's that's what for like taking to picnics and things like that. They could no, sort of... they, they, they're treating it as a, a uni tank ferment under pressure, right? Uh, it's small, and dispense, yeah, small, compact, mm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or you could use it as a, a an easy keg, but yeah, I don't know that I'd like to necessarily take a full keg of beer in a plastic thing and lug it around. No. Um, I have thing. seen the um, new keg backpack, the jetpack or whatever. I saw that at a <laughs> customer's in, uh, in a North uh, Brewing Company, and I did laugh at that. Um, that's taking, um, you know, beer to a party to a whole new level. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. We've sort of um, we, we've seen some people jump on the stainless steel kind of course during, you know, Black Friday, Friday, Cyber Monday. So I think people are always hunting and saving for stainless but um you can't go past the convenience and price for the plastic firm seller the 27 liter we've had done yeah. quite a few brews in the warehouse and really enjoyed um watching the fermentation the large dump valves there's some yeah there's well, a lot of buses going for it yeah i bought a i bought a um ss brew tech brew bucket and yeah i love it but i yes. really miss seeing that fermentation and the crowds yeah. and have yes. it all the time yeah. but you know, Watching your till bob around in there with, uh, under the crowds and yeah, yeah. No, no, the, 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 and look, I think the other thing with equipment, like you were mentioning equipment that I still haven't even seen the um, the, the specs on, it's it's just so fast what's coming out um, and, 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 you know, you, um, there'll be something new tomorrow. Um, they, they launch something in one size, then it comes out in a bigger size and a smaller size. Um, so, I th- I, I, look, it's, it's never been a greater time to be a brewer. Um, what about trends? What are sort of trends are you seeing in, in brewing in general and in the broader making uh, sort of thing? I think I kind of touched on it before when I was saying a lot of people want to get away from the cans and get into a better quality product and they're maybe willing to spend a little bit more for a batch. Uh, so like fresh work kits and they yeah. soup them up or, or even just like, souping up a bait they're no longer going kilo but the vast majority of the stuff that we sell um it's it's like a can and some different type of mixture of yeah not extract dextrose yeah it's an extra whatever but then we soup it up with dry hops or steeping hops right. or some and some customers are starting to get into some crushed grain yeah so many mashes ready. yeah yeah if, if they're not quite ready to make the jump to a full grain brew yeah. And we often say, you know, try try fresh work kits. That'll give you an idea of the right. the difference in flavour. And certainly yeah. coming up to Christmas, you know, fresh work kits are basically flying out the door. People, Yeah, we're, we're no, certainly no. seeing that as well. <laughs> people coming back from either holidays and saying, I've got nothing. Um, or just like you say, with Christmas and staff parties and, and, and things to do and family functions, no time to brew. So um, those fresh work kits are... Certainly convenient um, and and still a good good deal. I mean, they might be a bit more expensive than making it from scratch, but they're um, a great deal compared to going to the bottle shop. Um, right. Yeah, I think we um, touched on too earlier in our talk today, and 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 it might have been earlier in the week. The maker trend. I know it's small um, in comparison to say brewing beer, but you know the mead thing, the honey thing, the kombucha um, is very real. The bread makers. Um, I love watching pictures on Instagram of. Um, and yeah, the cheese makers. They put there the cheese makers, the cider makers. Um, so yeah, this whole maker trend. Um, yeah. and, and and I don't know if it's, you know, you brew beer, so you have a passion for fermentation, then you get into all the other things. Um, and if you go to people's houses, they're probably also doing stuff with with coffee and and things like that. Or is it that you're always into doing stuff, um, and then when you got to your beverage of choice, you decided, well, I might as well try and pick this apart and deconstruct it and brew it and make it. Um, yeah. But it's 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 good. I mean, it's it's great to, um, and and of course we see things trends jumping from thing uh, place to place. Like Roger bought in a kombucha the other day, an alcoholic kombucha that was hopped with you know um, Citra and Galaxy from from a new um, place in, in Geelong, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and it was a lovely, refreshing drink. Um, what about your predictions for next year? Andrew, what do you think? Where's the market going to go? Or... <laughs> well, yeah, I reckon uh, the hazy is still going to be there. I think sours are still on the rise. Yeah. Um, like your Berliner Weiss and your um, moderate, I don't know if, I've I've had a few people send me like Katarina Sour and a full uh-huh. a full on crakes and uh, yeah. I think that's going to be like the 
uh, West Coast IPA, too bitter okay. for some. Those those who love it really love it, but it may not be like for the masses. Yeah. I think the, um, the Berliner Weiss and your your light sours. Maybe a gozer or something yeah. like that. Yeah. See, yeah. there's certainly these, um, what they call, uh, I think the Stomping Ground in Melbourne's launched quite a few of them, call them squashes, uh, you know, like kettle soured. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that, that makes a lot of sense too, doesn't it, when we were talking before about like how do you get um, young women interested in, um, uh, you know, adult over um, drinking, legal drinking age people interested in, <laughs> I mean, like when we're talking about spring race and carnival. Um, <laughs> Interested in uh, looking at beer as a serious option for refreshment. Uh, the uh, you know a lot of wine drinkers will say I don't like beer because either a it's too bitter, or or they find it can be s- sweet because it's higher pH. So yeah, well, those before about the brood IPAs. I, th- I think the the female drink well not all females but often females that drink wine they're used to that acidity being in their yeah, beer, being true. in their fridge, and true. then with the brood IPA it was marketed like champagne but then it had all this bitterness in there and the ipa drinkers were like yeah this is great but all the yeah. potential gateway um, drinkers yeah we were sold the wrong thing oh i don't know yeah good yeah, point and i think on a hot day uh, there's nothing wrong isn't there with a um a blood orange gazer or a, a guava oh, yeah. squash shell or whatever it is um <clears> even <throat> if you do zero out towards a Pilsner or off to something else afterwards. But, Great. yeah, well, look, um, well, I th- I'm with you on on, on those things. Um, definitely, um, I think we will see more sours, but like you said, probably kettle sours. Um, the other one I've put here, I think we talk about it every year, but I don't know if it's going to happen or not, um, small batch brewing, or you mentioned, which was really interesting and um, really pleasing to hear, I was – brewing the scotch ale and then I thought I'd take two litres over here and, and whack some Quebec in it and just see what it does so you know yeah. split batching whether you make 20 litres of wort and pour it into five different four different demijohns uh, five litre demijohns and pop different yeasts in or um, but um, and you men- mentioned about these new plastic kegs so whether we'll see People maybe I don't think people are going to necessarily brew smaller unless you're in a small apartment. But I think yeah. that you, maybe you're going to start with a big 50 litre batch and then make two yeah. or three different beers from it. Uh, yeah, the, there's a guy uh, in our homebrew club, the homebrew club that I'm a member yeah. of. He did a talk about that's that's how he brews for the comps. He'll plan out his beers and he'll make a base beer at however many litres and put in like figure out how he's going to divvy it all out and change his hopping schedules in it's it was i couldn't follow but it was quite amazing but yeah the whole i'm going to brew once it's a long process and i'm going to get the most amount of value out of it <laughs> and uh but I like think, party goal brewing you know like fullers have the party goal brewing where the first yeah, running goes to the fullers esp and the second running goes to london pride and the third to cheswick bitter or something it was more like he started with like the minimum yeah. level of color and the minimum level okay. of bitterness for all his beers, and then as he went through, he added in some extra steeping grains and then some Brilliant. steeping to wow. build the IBUs. And wow. so, well, so he brew the big batch and then just do little stove tops to augment it. But, wow, that's fantastic! But, yeah, I do love the um, I love the you know the, the the different approaches some people take to uh, to make to I get what we. I used to joke with people that I think Australians, you know, are the most time efficient brewers. They invented brew in the bag, um, invented no chill brewing. So, uh, you know, he's now taking that to a new level. Maybe he's going to brew on New Year's Day and brew the whole beer for a year. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you yeah, know, that look, I guess the, the other thing I wanted to say, because we don't want to drag it on too much uh, for our um, our viewers, is thanks, Sass, for all your great work this year. We've really enjoyed watching the videos and um well, we're running around the warehouse and don't have the time to answer everyone's questions. I'll certainly point a lot of our customers to your um, great uh, work on the YouTube and, um, and wishing you and your family well for Christmas. What will be um, on the kegerator or on the Christmas table yourself this Christmas? So I've just today finished the last two brews. Uh, well, put them on to ferment. Uh, so I'll have a session version of a Duvel triple... Uh, Hot citra. Oh, so, lovely. So I use the um, Giga Yeast Golden Pear. Oh, great. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. 
and uh, I'm only making it to six uh, percent was the plan. And it ended up about five point six. Didn't get down as, as long as I wanted because it was only it was about five months old before I used it, so I had to make a start. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. It's tasting fine into the keg, but I'm just yeah. it's carbonating and conditioning, and I'm not even connecting it to the tap. It's just I'm not allowed wow. to it until Christmas. So um, that'll be great. Uh, so that's that's number one. I've just done a clone of the McKellar Jackie Brown American Brown Ale. Oh, great! Uh, so that's that's uh, should be starting to bubble away soon. And that should I'm, pair really well with your meats and um, and yeah. savoury dishes. Yeah, and uh, I've got a ginger mead uh, on for the third tap. So it's about a six five and a half six percent ginger great. mead, um, which kind of an alternative to a ginger beer and if, Great if you idea. mix it with soda water and have like a three percent refreshing thing or that's a uh, great idea i hadn't it's... thought about that with meat because that's one thing i love about meat is the um the beautiful flavors and like say the infusions those um uh, methaglens and things like that and i've done one like a uh, clone of kurt's apple pie before but they're very oh. heavy and and you'd some you know it's going to get to the end of the meal and want to drink a 16 17 percent out of like little sherry glasses but your idea with the soda water this is more, of a, more of a short mead i guess yeah i like that yeah yeah great and it's you sparkling obviously so excellent well i guess um before we so, sign out we should encourage all our listeners to write in and uh, send us their questions for next year isn't it should be user generated content and um and wish them merry christmas and uh, we'll, we'll look forward to some more chats in the new year yeah very, uh, very much looking forward to it, and uh, it's been fun this year. It's been a bit of hard work, but, you know, everything that's worth it is hard work. So, uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, but, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll crack the Facebook Live um, before too long. Uh, Technology just wasn't our friend today, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't. But Bear, but Bear was our friend, and, uh, and you know, as long as, as we have a brew or, or – oh, there we go. It's definitely time to sign out. Thanks, Stas. You look after yourself. Cheers, Dan, and Merry Christmas. Cheers. Same to you. See you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye-bye, everyone.